welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to look at five operating systems now available for the Raspberry Pi 4, and specifically Manjaro, LibreLec, OpenMediaVault, DiaPi, and the 64-bit version of Raspbian. So, here we are booting into Manjaro on a Raspberry Pi 4. A few videos back I tried out Manjaro on a standard PC, an x86 PC, and here we are running the ARM version on a Raspberry Pi 4, which is very exciting. As you'll see, this is a really nice operating system. This is not my first boot, I've got everything set up, so I can just now enter my password. Nice simple test password there, and it'll take us to the desktop. I'm not quite sure what this bit is, but I think it's sequencing DNA. I think it's trying to work out the design for a future biological computer. But anyway, it's finished its work there, and here we are on the Manjaro desktop. I should note that in this video, I'm testing all of the operating systems on a four gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4, which is a running away with an ice tower cooler fitted. So let's go to the uh, browser here, go to Firefox, and just show you where I got hold of Manjaro. And uh, here we are, we just go to uh, manjaro.org, which the browser has remembered from a previous visit. Hopefully it'll arrive there in a second. Oh yes, we're going to Manjaro. And if we click on a uh, Try Manjaro, it'll take us to a page we can access the different versions for different platforms and things. It'll get there in a second, there we are. It's all very nice and stylish. Everything to do with Manjaro is just nice and stylish and slick and, and really nice to use. And if we go to additions here and go to ARM and a Raspberry Pi 4, we'll find the additions for the Raspberry Pi 4. And there's three of them. There's one based on the KDE Plasma desktop. There's a one which is a minimal edition without a desktop and there's one based upon the XFCE desktop. And here I'm using the one based upon KDE Plasma. And I point out this is a 64-bit operating system for the Raspberry Pi 4, which is very welcome indeed. Now, as we're in the browser, I thought we'd just try out YouTube playback. So we'll just uh, here go to YouTube and we'll pick up my uh, standard test video. And I'd point out that as far as I'm as aware, we don't have hardware acceleration in the browser yet. So what we're playing back here is not using the GPU. This is all a software-based playback, but it's still not bad. This is pretty good. And if I just go to a stats for nerds down there, let's see how it's doing. Uh, there are some drop frames. We can clearly see there's some drop frames up here and it's all stopped completely for a second there. But um, once it's settled, this is not too bad. This is fairly good playback. So browser-based web playback is is pretty decent. I think I, I could certainly live with this once things are settled down. And I do think myself that really you have to have decent full HD playback in a browser on a modern desktop, which is something we haven't currently got in the 32-bit version of Raspbian really on the Raspberry Pi 4, at least in what, October 2019. So that's for me a big tick for a Manjaro. Let's go back to the, the desktop and look inside the, the menu and see what sort of things we've got pre-installed. We go to Applications. We'll see under uh, Development what's under there. There's a few bits and pieces. Uh, if we look under uh, Education, again, it's really just a, a few bits and pieces. This is largely set up so you can install your own software. Under Graphics, again, not a lot there, but there's a few, few bits of there. Uh, under Internet, They've given us a Firefox, as we've seen, and again, a couple of uh, utilities, really. Uh, under multimedia, there's some players installed, but basically that is it. Uh, under uh, Office, we've got uh, LibreOffice, as you would expect. So let's launch the word process to show you how responsive that is. And in general, one of the things that doesn't come across in the video is how slick an operating system is, that the feel, and the feel here in Manjaro is very good indeed. Let's just type a hello, and of course uh, put hello into a much bigger font, which is I think the law when you're uh, showing an operating system. Oh, there we are. That's all working very nicely. So we'll just come out of this, and no, we won't save that. Well, where were we in our, our menu? We were down here somewhere, weren't we? Um, settings, we've got to all sorts of settings available. Let's go to system settings, which are beautiful. It's got an absolutely fantastic settings here in the uh, KDE Plasma 
um, desktop, which is really nice. We can set lots of different themes are available. We've got what's called the plasma styles inside the themes. We've got great color settings. You can configure this really, really nicely. I'm really very impressed with this. It's a, a superb operating system to use on, on the Pi. Also down here, let's just finish off what we've given us in applications. We've got under system various uh, system tools and things. We've got a system monitor there. Shall we uh, have a look at that? And if some of you would like to see this, there we are. You can see what is going on. Uh, not a lot of memory being used. Look, just uh, what 370-ish megabytes there of, of, of our four gigabytes available. So this is clearly nice and, and light. Everything's running really well there. And uh, finally, just anything we've missed, we've got uh, under utilities. What's under utilities? Uh, oh, not a lot, really. So there we are. This is a very, very nice Raspberry Pi 4 operating system. If you've been used to using Raspbian, you want to use something different, I would strongly suggest having a look at Manjaro. Right. I thought we'd now take a look at Libra Elec, a media player distro which, uh, as it says on the screen here, is just enough operating system for Kodi. And what this means is if you install Libra Elec on a Raspberry Pi 4, as you can see here, it boots directly into the Kodi media player. So if you want to play local video or you want to stream online video from YouTube or elsewhere, then Libra Elec is a great distro to install. To get LibreLec, you need to go to the downloads page on the LibreLec.tv website. And then if you scroll down, you'll find amongst the boards here is the Raspberry Pi 4. And if you select that, obviously, you'll then find on the Raspberry Pi 4 page, there's a download image. And as with all the other distros I'm covering in this video, all you need to do is to download the particular image file and then use a program like Melena Etcher to write it to a micro SD card you'll put in your Raspberry Pi. Anyway, let's go back to uh, LibreLec, and you'll see I haven't got everything set up here. For every one of these categories here, you can set up your own library, adding in files, so things will be waiting there for you. Uh, I point out up here there's some great settings, so you can get into a settings panel, set everything up nice and straightforwardly. Kodi's got a fantastic interface. It's easy to use, either using a keyboard or a mouse or uh, some sort of remote device if you've got it connected to a television. Let's just come out of uh, that. and. Uh, just to show you some of the things it can do, it really is very straightforward to, uh, to get on with. I go to say video there, and we go to files, and I've got uh, an SSD plugged in. And if we go to say sample videos, oh, we can play the older uh, explaining computers titles. There they are, look. Oh, hopefully. Yes, that's what my titles used to look like not that long ago. There we are. As you can see, local media playback is no problem at all, which is what you would uh, expect. You can also um, play a stream video from the web. Let's go to video add-ons. You can add all kinds of add-ons into Kodi, very straightforward. Here I've added YouTube, as you would probably guess. And if I go to a uh, search here, and we'll go down to there, and uh, wait a second, and there we are, there's my sample clip, which will hopefully play. We saw this earlier in Manjaro, and it's playing much better here in LibreLec. I can't uh, bring up the uh, stats for nerds functionality here, but uh, we really don't need it. This is clearly playing a 1080p video from YouTube very smoothly. So if you want a good media playback experience on a Raspberry Pi, then my strong suggestion right now in what later 2019 is to install LibreLec and to, to run things from that. So uh, there we are. That is a uh, LibreLec. Not much more to say about this really. There's lots of uh, setup things you can do here. As you can see, lots of different uh, things you can add in. There's even a weather thing there, which I don't think it allows you to actually control the weather, but uh, you can set a weather provider, which maybe that's the people who provide your weather. Probably not, Chris, is it? Anyway, this is Libralec, a greater media player distro for the Raspberry Pi 4. Moving on from a distro dedicated to media playback, let's turn to one whose function is file sharing, and that is a Open Media Vault, which, uh, as it explains on its website at uh, openmediavault.org, allows you to build a next generation network attached storage solution, a NAS solution on your Raspberry Pi. And uh, if we go to download here, you'll find it's actually available for lots of different platforms and systems. 
but if we look under installation images on there it'll take us out to a source forge and we can see here there are Raspberry Pi images specifically there they are and uh, under here you'll find there's a version which it will run on the, uh, the Raspberry Pi 4. And unlike the other distros we're looking at here, Open Media Vault is accessed on the Pi using a web interface, which looks like uh, this. This is the web interface to Open Media Vault. And this allows you to do all kinds of things. It allows you to set up your uh, storage, the disks, the drives on your uh, Raspberry Pi. And it also allows you to uh, set up uh, users and groups and shared folders. And this allows you to then share those folders using various network sharing services. And I've looked at this in detail in a recent video about setting up a NAS on a Raspberry Pi using Open Media Vault, so I won't go through any more details of it here, but I thought we should include Open Media Vault in my list of Raspberry Pi 4 distros. Right, the next operating system we're going to look at is Diet Pi, which is a very lightweight version of Debian. And we can get it from the website here at dietpi.com. And if we keep scrolling down here, it's a very nice site. And if we go down, you'll see under download, all sorts of Singapore computers are supported. And we, of course, want a Raspberry Pi. So we click on that. And from there, we can then download an image. So we'll uh, download the image in a normal way and uh, save it to our machine. And then you'll have to unzip this file because it's a 7-zip file before writing it to a micro SD card. With the card inserted into a Raspberry Pi, the Pi will then boot to a command line login where the username to enter is root and the password is a diet Pi. And I should say it's a very good idea when you're running this to have your Pi connected to an Ethernet connection because it'll want to go online. And as you'll see, this is a utility for helping you set everything up with diet Pi. Note you'll need to use the tab key to get to uh, things like OK on the screen like that. And once this runs through, we get to a menu where we can configure Diet Pi and install all kinds of software to turn this distro into anything from a media player to a retro gaming machine to a small server. Indeed, there are so many options that I'd need a whole video to go through them all. And so here, I'm simply going to search for and install the LXDE lightweight desktop environment. And by the magic of filmmaking, with all of the setup completed, here we are on that LXDE desktop in Diet Pi. So let's see what we've got here. And remember, this is a minimal operating system, a minimal install, lightweight justice for your SBC, as it says down here, so not much is installed. But if we look to the menu, we've got a few accessories, and it really is just a few calculator, image viewer, etc. Uh, graphics, we've got a few test programs. We can do some uh, exciting gears to do some graphical tests. There they are. Uh, we've got uh, internet, we've got Firefox, which uh, comes up. We've got to have Firefox, haven't we? Let's just try YouTube. This is my uh, sample YouTube clip, which um, I don't think is going to do terribly well because obviously I've had a look. And uh, the issue here is it can't get to a decent resolution. Look down here under the little gear. Come on, little gear, work for us. There we are. Come on, give us settings. There they are. It can only find a 360p version of the video. So it does work, but clearly the quality is not very good. This may be because it's an earlier version of Firefox, something like that. But certainly I don't think uh, Diet Pi is the place to go to get uh, necessarily uh, the video playback at the moment. But uh, at least not in uh, the LXDE desktop. And uh, what else we got here? Sound and video. We've got some uh, things for setup, uh, system tools, quite a bit there, all the way you can configure Diet Pi, install software, all that type of stuff. HTOP is there. Let's just run up HTOP. Some of you like to see it. There we are. We can see HTOP for those of you with uh, very good eyes. And uh, other than that, um, preferences as you would expect. So there we are. This is Diet Pi. If you want to experiment with a Raspberry Pi with all kinds of configurations and setting up all sorts of different things, Diet Pi is well worth investigating. Right, our fifth and final operating system in this video is Raspbian, which is the operating system made available for the Raspberry Pi by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And having spent a few days looking at other Raspberry Pi operating systems for this video, it's great to be back in Raspbian because it really reminds you how 
absolutely fantastic Raspbian really is. This said, the reason we're here is that Raspbian is a 32-bit operating system. So even though the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Raspberry Pi 4 have got a 64-bit processor, for compatibility with previous Pis, Raspbian has remained a 32-bit system. But in September 2019, the Raspberry Pi Foundation did release the first version of 64-bit Raspbian so people could test it out. And that's what we're going to do here. So to get the 64-bit version of Raspbian, there's two things you need to do. But before you do either of them, it's worth making sure you've got a backup of your operating system. So what I've done here before I've actually started recording this segment of the video, I've gone to Accessories and SD Card Copier and use that to make a copy of my boot card just in case things get messed up. So with that caution out the way, the first thing you need to do is to edit your config.txt file in the text editor and to add this command on the end, arm 64-bit equals one. So with that in place, you then need to open up a terminal and uh, here we are, a nice little terminal, and we need to do an update, sudo and uh, raspberry pi, rpi, and update like that. And uh, this will go on through, it'll take a while, it'll ask us to confirm here and there, so I'll just let this complete. And there we are, the uh, update is complete, and we've altered our config file to use the 64-bit kernel, so all we need to do now, in theory, is just to reboot our uh, raspberry pi. And here we are, arrived back in uh, Raspbian, which should now be running 64-bit. And I should point out there have been several reboots since I spoke to you a few seconds ago, because following the update, all my display settings went uh, kind of weird, and I've had to sort all those out. But we should be able to prove we've got a 64-bit operating system here if we would launch a, a terminal, and we'd type a uname uh, minus a, and hopefully, uh, yes, there we are, we can see we're running a 64-bit system, which is, which is very exciting, Raspbian in 64-bit. This said, it is worth pointing out that all of the applications on the Pi here in Raspbian are still 32-bit. So the benefits of running a 64-bit operating system here will be minimal. Maybe uh, better performance from Ethernet and USB and better memory handling, maybe, maybe some of those benefits will have, but basically there won't be a lot of difference. But even so, I think this is a very exciting development that Raspbian is moving towards being 64-bit. Okay, it's 64-bit here, but this I'm sure will become the, the uh, default version of Raspbian, I would imagine sometime maybe in, in 2020. And then we might start to see 64-bit applications included with Raspbian, particularly a 64-bit browser, would be a fantastic thing to have. So there we are. I think an interesting development to conclude our review of operating systems available for the Raspberry Pi 4. When the Raspberry Pi 4 launched in June 2019, it took the world by surprise. And so inevitably, there weren't that many operating systems, that many distros available for the board. But a few months later, things have changed. As we've seen in this video, already we've got quite a wide range of choice of operating systems for the Raspberry Pi 4, and that choice is going to go on expanding. And indeed, I think into 2020, we're going to see a lot more 64-bit operating system support for the Raspberry Pi 4. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.